Hi there, everybody. Today, we went to the post office to pick up our long-awaited package. Of course, this is not some ordinary package. Inside this box, we have a giant deer carcass. We load the package into the car and head home. We take the carcass out of the box, and let me tell you, it is freaking heavy. It weighs as much as 95 kilograms, and the deer cost us around $685, roughly. This deer is even bigger than me. The deer is wild, and there's still a lot of blood left in it. If you start cooking it right away, then the whole taste will be spoiled. Therefore, a special marinade is needed. To do this, we take a large metal bath, and we fill it with water from a well. We half fill the tank, and that should be enough. For such a volume, you need a lot of spices. To begin with, granulated garlic. We open it up and pour it into the water. Now a mixture of peppers. Allspice. A lot of bay leaf. Ground coriander. one and a half kilograms of salt. And we pour this all into the bath. Also some hot peppers. We cut them into pieces with a knife. And just dump it into the bath. We mix all of this with a slotted spoon. We taste all this and realize that there's not enough salt in the marinade. We fill in another pack. We transfer the deer to the bath. Part of the carcass sticks out of the water. So we add more water. Now the whole deer is covered in the marinade. To keep the water constantly cold, I took these cold converters. They have ice inside. We transfer them to the marinade. And cover with saran wrap. In this mold, we leave all this for at least a day. That way the brine draws excess blood from the carcass. But our day didn't stop there. Dad worked all night to make a reliable structure that would rotate the deer for a really long time. Here we insert a spit into a such special clip with a bearing. We also bought a motor like this, but that's not all. The belt sticks to the shaft, and the spit turns even slower through the gearbox. Here is a released huge structure as a result turned out. We first lay out the bottom, which is refractory brick, where this is where we'll burn the fire. And then our wall. We immediately put the firewood in there. Now let's go back to the deer. As we wanted, the brine pulled out a lot of unnecessary blood out of the meat. We remove the cold accumulators. We pull out the carcass from the table. And almost all of the blood came out. The meat was salted and the spices were glued on top of it. Push a large tube through the deer. And we put on the clips. We transfer the carcass to the structure. We cut off a piece of the wire, punch in through the back, and tighten from the inside. Now the back is securely pressed. Now we clamp the deer on the sides and tighten the fasteners.
The hind legs are pulled up to the pipe and fixed to the wire. We also press the neck and front legs. But that's not all. If you leave the carcass in this mold spinning over the fire, then it will burn on the outside, but inside it will be damp. First, you need a mesh made from fat. We throw this into a bowl and fill it with water and vinegar. We wash it and stretch it out. This is what a pork fat mesh looks like. We need this to keep our deer juicy since it doesn't really have much of its own. We cover the carcass with the mesh The next layer is parchment. It will hold in the meat juice so that the meat will braise. Done. The last layer is all that's left. This is a reinforced construction foil. We wrap it around the whole deer. To keep everything in place, we wrap it with wire. and we cut off the excess with pliers. The carcass is already fully packed. Now we kindle the coals and pour them on the firewood. The fire broke out very quickly. Now we turn on the spit. And now we just need to maintain a good fire so that the meat warms up. And while it's spinning by itself, we're gonna make a side dish, namely potatoes in a rustic way. We open up 10 kilograms of potatoes, Pour them into a basin with water. And we wash them with our hands. Now we cut them into slices. And dump the slices into a large bowl. All of our potatoes have already been sliced. So we pour half into the gastro capacity. Add seasoning to the potatoes. Probably the most important one is the granulated garlic. Fill everything with oil. Add some salt. And mix. Done. Pour all the slices into a large baking tray. And distribute evenly. That's it. We send the baking sheet into our huge oven. We light the burners. And just wait. After a couple of hours, our potatoes are browned, and you can take them out. After five hours, we check the temperature of the meat with a thermometer. It's still a long way from being ready. In the meantime, we make a cranberry sauce. We need a whole kilogram of cranberries. We open it up and pour it into the saucepan. We take two oranges and remove the zest from them. and add that to the berries. Here we have 200 grams of sugar, 100 milliliters of water, and put it on the fire. Bring this to a boil and stir. It is necessary that the berries boil for five minutes, then they become softer. Cut the oranges in half, and squeeze out their juice. Now we blend all this together with an immersion blender. And that's it, the cranberry sauce is ready. It was already getting dark and the meat was still cooking and cooking. We waited all evening. And then we sat up all night throwing in firewood. And 18 hours later in the morning, the meat was ready. Let's open it up. 
After removing all the foil and parchment, we see fully cooked browned meat. We cut off the wire and cut off the hind leg. We put the meat on a tray and then disassemble the deer. We transfer all the potatoes from the baking sheet to a bowl and pour them out before the meat. And now we sprinkle with dill. And put some cranberry sauce on the side. Finally, everything is ready. Let's try our creation. Potatoes first. This turned out to be a really good potato in a sort of rustic way. Crisp in the outside, soft on the inside. Most importantly, garlicky. Let's cut off a piece of the juiciest venison. We dip it in the sauce. And let's taste it. It turns out that the deer is very similar to beef. Only with the aftertaste of wild meat. In general, it's really tasty. Of course, we didn't eat all of this ourselves, but rather we divvied it up amongst friends and relatives. We even froze and saved some for ourselves. Next time, we'll cook something that will make your hair stand on end. Out of surprise, I mean, obviously. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye, everybody.